Today we're going to look at linear and nonlinear functions and before we begin we're just going to examine what the words linear and nonlinear mean. The word linear derives from the word line and of course uh, that would suggest that when we're talking about a function that the function makes a straight line and typically what you see um, when you have a line is you have a uh, you have a function that looks that looks something more like y equals m x plus b. For those of you who recall the slope intercept form of a line, that's what you're looking at here. Right? Nonlinear functions, on the other hand, uh, they they do not form a straight line. What they what happens is is that generally you see a curve or you see a piecewise function that has multiple lines that is that is creating um, that is creating a, 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 a zigzag or a jagged a jagged line. So anything that is not a straight line is a nonlinear function. Now, typically, curves are represented by exponents in the equation. So what we see here is we have a we have an equation here that has an exponent there, and what's actually happening is the exponent is creating a curve on the line because there is a there is a an increase or a decrease on the line that is that is growing faster or or uh, or uh, or slower. Right. Um, so whenever you see an exponent in the equation, you're talking about a nonlinear function. If you don't have an exponent in the equa equation, typically you're talking about a linear function. So this here would be a nonlinear function. So does the equation y equals x cubed minus 3 define y as a linear function of x? The answer to that will be no. Okay, moving on. Again, now we've got graphs that we're looking at at this point here. Um, does the graph below represent uh, y as a linear function of, of x? Well, let's take a look at it. This is a line. It is a straight line. It is represented as in, in the equation y equals mx plus b. In fact, the equation for this line is y equals, look at our slope here going up. It goes, say, up, up 2 or up, up, up 2 and across 1. So its slope is 2. So y equals 2x. Uh, and the y-intercept there is negative 4, so minus 4. This is the equation of our line. We can see it is a linear equation, so that uh, this, this here is a linear function. The next one here we see this 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 um, equation here, if you recall, is written now in, um, in point-slope form. Right. Again, it is. We looked at, uh, at three forms of uh, of the equation for a line uh, a couple of modules back. Uh, we looked at the slope-intercept form. We looked at the point-slope form, and we looked at standard form. And in each case, those were forms that create a line. What we have here is we have the point-slope form, which is which is y minus y1, y1 being the y point of the of the point, uh, equals m times x minus x1. Right, so we actually have here the point x1, y1 is one of the points of the line, and the slope m is given there as well. And with the po a point and a slope, you can draw a line quite easily. So you can see here that this equation here, because it's in point-slope form, and there's no exponents, notice, um, this is, of course, a linear function. Now here's an example of a nonlinear function, and it's quite, it's quite straightforward. It's quite obvious when you see it. You can see that this, this function is increasing very quickly. Here it, cur it turns over. The, the, the slope of the line changes. At every single point the slope of this line is actually changing. Right? And in fact it turns over, it, 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 of this curve, sorry, and it turns over and it, it starts decreasing and then it starts increasing again. This of course is a nonlinear function. We're not required to know the the equation for this function right now, that's something that we'll work on later on. It's, it's suffice to know that this, because it does not create a straight line, is a nonlinear function. Because it is not a line. Okay, one more example we'll take a look at is um, an example that comes in a table. Now, once again, in a table we have to look at things like we have to look at things like is, the, is this increasing in an exponential form or not? So when we look at the y value based on the x value, is the y value created by an exponent of x? Is the difference, is the difference non-linear? So typically you would see an, a, a straightforward increase. So this would go, it would go up, in this case here, it's not, 
it's not increasing at all. This is this is increasing. This is this is a uh, this is a straight line. Um, this is the line y equals five. So it, this is a, a, a horizontal line. But what you might see is you might see a a, a change in y and a change in x, provide it being the same, right right across the board. And in fact, we do see that to be true. In this case, our change in y is zero. Our change in x is one. Our change in y is zero. Our change in x is one. Our change in y is zero, and our change in x is one. So this is uniform. It's uniform right across the board, which gives us a nonlinear, which gives us a linear function. If the, these these changes, these slopes, were not uniform, if you had different slopes right going going right down, then you would have a nonlinear function. But this one here is indeed linear. Okay, so right now all you need all you need to do is recognize the difference between a linear and a nonlinear function, and that's all given by the slope. If you can define the slope well, whether it's a whether it's a horizontal line, whether it's a vertical line, or whether it's a uh, an increasing or decreasing straight line, that would make a linear function. Anything else is nonlinear, whether it's a piecewise function that zigzags all over the place, or a curve that uh, that changes. Over, over time. Um, so give this a, a try for yourselves and let me know if you have any questions.